let's move on to uh, relapsed refractory myeloma, which is an area in which um, FDA approval and somewhat paradigm-changing studies of particularly now the monoclonal antibodies daratumumab and elotuzumab seem to be changing our practice. Um, I want to start then with, with really the hottest topic right now, which is uh, daratumumab, the monoclonal antibody against CD38. And what we've learned at this meeting about the use of that drug in combination with existing agents. And I'm going to ask you, Paul, to start us out because you were one of the lead investigators uh, on these trials. So first of all, let's talk about the Pollux clinical trial. Um, well, Tell us what it is and what we found. Absolutely. And the Pollux study was a comparison in uh, relapsed and relapsed refractory disease, one to three prior lines of the current standard, lenalidomide dexamethasone versus daratumumab lendex in a large international trial. And I think the, the takeaway is very straightforward, dramatic results, unprecedented actually in terms of hazard ratio, demonstrating benefit to the three drug platform. Uh, and I think the progression-free survival estimate hasn't been reached for the three drug arm, um, but probably is north of four years, um, whereas the lenalidomide... I heard you say that the other day, how did yeah. you get to four years, because it's not close to, we haven't even had that much follow-up. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you estimate it and go out, it's not right about 40 months. Mm -hmm. Right now, um, it's, it's, it's... Yes, I take your point. We have yeah. to be careful. But I, I'm just yeah. saying that it's not reached. And I think that the control arm, of course, Lendex, is, is classical. It's around 18 mm -hmm. months. So mm -hmm. I think at the same time, uh, we're seeing essentially a potential doubling of progression-free survival. Mm -hmm. And what's so striking is it's in the relapse setting. Sad, what about response rates and depth of response with this combination of DARA lenalidomide dex versus lenalidomide dex? What do we learn? I, th I think we, we've, again, you know, I, I would echo uh, what Paul has already said. You know, we, we're seeing fairly unprecedented median PFSs and depth of responses. Um, the, the CR or better rates of, um, you know, 40 um, odd percent um, um, or above are very impressive, very impressive for, right. for this kind of setting. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, talking about MRD negativity, um, you know, in this kind of setting, um, you know, we're not talking about newly diagnosed, but relapse setting, we're seeing MRD negativity with this regimen, which is also impressive. 10 to 20 percent. Yep. And it um, doesn't matter how you break it down, you know, by lines of therapy, prior exposure, or, or cytogenetics, there appears to be a benefit yeah. across the board. I, and I was exactly going to yeah. ask that question of Sagar, because I've heard you say that one of the values of these drugs is perhaps they don't care too much about the genetics of the tumor, mm -hmm. and what's, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, certainly the data is, is very early, but lines of therapy and all the mm -hmm. other predisposing high-risk things that we think do not seem to have as big an impact in terms of, of outcomes. If you've had one line, you do better than if you've had more than one line. Uh, but, uh, but, but I think in general, I think what we're seeing is that the antibodies uh, in, and daratumumab in this case specifically is almost like rituximab. It, it seems to make everything it works with better. Okay, very good. And, and we've also seen at this uh, meeting a uh, study called the Castor study. Amrita, do you want to tell the audience what that's about? So in a similar vein, randomized phase three trial, um, the backbone in this case being bortezomib and dexamethasone versus daratumumab plus bortezomib plus dexamethasone. And we see sort of a similar story, a much higher response rate in the uh, daratumumab arm, MRD negative again in the daratumumab arm, long progression-free survival. And I believe in that trial too, we've not reached a median progression-free survival for the daratumumab arm. So I think it suggests that either one of those combinations um, Dara Vel, Dara Botezomib Dex or Dara Lenalidomide Dex are good combinations in that early relapse setting. Now, Sad, when I looked at those two trials, there was a clear winner in my head, and, and one mm -hmm. of the things I took away from it was the backbone therapy, particularly Botezomib Dex, just wasn't that good in our current modern practice. Should anybody get Botezomib Dex alone? Uh, and we'll come to some other studies in support of what I'm saying in a minute, but. Should MD get that alone at relapse, or is that finished? No, I, I think, um, you know, you can make the case uh, that, you know, the triplet regimens are superior to the doublet regimens. We've seen several cases of that in, in the early lines of settings over the past two years. So, you know, I, 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 I think you're probably right. Yes, but in, in fairness, you, I think this is something that in the Castor trial we have to be very clear about. There was a fixed duration of bortezomib exposure, right. and that resulted in the, in the relatively short uh, um, progression-free survival compared to Lendex, which was continuous. So, you know, I, I think the we're just a little careful The follow-up in both studies is very short. Do you think that's, uh, do you think it will change over time, or do you think we have our answer already, Paul? 
Um, I, I think the, the, the clinical benefit to me is so striking that I would, can't imagine a situation where it would diminish, whether it will magnify, um, and especially when we see a big survival difference emerge that will continue to grow, um, we'll see. I, I just think that with a hazard ratio of 0.3435, those are values that we've never mm -hmm. seen before in myeloma. So uh, those speak, I think, volumes. I think the other point to make is toxicity-wise, because mm. it's all it's great to add stuff. But I think that was the other striking thing of yes, these combinations exactly. that we did not see a significant yep. increase in the toxicity. City. And so, so um, uh, daratumumab added to these drugs uh, looks to be very advantageous. The FDA has just approved, approved the it, use yep. of these drugs in first relapse. Lenalidomide we've talked about is widely used in maintenance strategies in, in North America until time of progression. And this study that we're all talking about uses lenalidomide, so other alternatives probably have to be considered. Yep. Uh, what do you do in a patient who's lenalidomide refractory and you want to give them daratumumab at relapse, Sagar? Yeah, so I think um, you're right. I think the applicability of certainly the Pollux trial in a, in a group of mm. patients that are LEN resistant, at least single agent LEN resistant, is a little bit hard to extrapolate sometimes. And in, in our situation, when we want to use DARA in the first relapse setting, we will likely partner it with pomalidomide based on data presented last year. I see a lot of nodding heads. Is that exactly pretty much right. the, yes, the exactly switch right. that we're yeah. all making? Yeah, yeah. and that, I, I, I mean, our experience, and we're presenting some retreatment data at the meeting as well, suggests that it's, it's highly potent. Um, we have treated 17 P-deleted patients, which seem to do actually well with pomalidomide based on a French trial uh, with Palmdera and have been very happy with the results. So most people are, if you've been on lenalidomide and you've progressed on it, would you go back to lenalidomide if you'd stopped uh, earlier like I've been doing? So I think it, uh, yes, absolutely. And I think whether or not I abandon len depends a lot on the type of relapse, the, type, the genetics of that patient, how far away they live. I mean, I think there are reasons you can say to potentially escalate the LEN, add DEX and add ELO or to add ICSA, depending upon what other things option. But if a patient needs a quick response, our first go-to in that situation is, is Palmdera. But if, if I can speak to, to Sagar's point, because of the abstract, he is presenting on retreatment with DARA, mm -hmm. but I think also our experience, sometimes when we add back lenalidomide, we're doing it not for the lenalidomide, we're doing it for its immunomodulatory effects and making the DARA work better. Mm -hmm. So I, I certainly have done And And that. that's where, you know, pomalidomide, at least in my experience, I, I share the same as, as Sagar, you know, even, even a modest dose of pomalidomide appears to augment uh, the effects. I think we have to be careful. I was talking to some of the other, you know, Mayo Arizona colleagues. Um, there is a tolerability issue with the high dose of pomalidomide with, with daratumumab. Yeah, so. well, one of my colleagues in particular has suggested he's seen quite a lot of neutropenia mm -hmm. when you put those two drugs together. Yes. And yeah. Maybe using a lower dose of pomalidomide in the right. first month or two until you've and sorted so we, things out. And, and weaving in a proteasome inhibitor of whatever uh, variety one wants to choose. I mean, we've been very, I'm again struck by the CASTA data in the sense that it certainly validates the integration of a PI mm -hmm. into the backbone with mm -hmm. Darrow, clearly. Uh, and I think that's very promising.